You have just created your first HTML template. Django combined the template with a context and the result was a page in the browser. But the page in the browser does not physically exist on the server. Django creates it on the fly, each time the browser makes a request. This is what dynamic websites do. But even dynamic websites have some code that will be the same for all requests. An example for this are the cascading style sheets, or CSS. If you have already created a website before, you know how this works. A reference is created from the HTML page to the style sheet and then the styles can be used in the HTML page. This approach works fine when we run websites locally. But once we start publishing to cloud providers, this process becomes more complicated because cloud providers might have a different policy how to host static files. For now, the run server command will take care of static files as long as we follow some guidelines. They are 1. We will follow a specific folder structure convention and 2. We use the static tag when linking to the static file. Let me start by creating a style sheet in the appropriate folder. I create a static file folder structure, similar to the templates. In the shop application, create folder static. Then create a shop folder in the static folder. Then a styles folder, followed by a file called screen.css. Let me implement some rules that drastically improve the looks of our website. Now I will use the style sheet in the template. Django needs the following commands to load static files. And now the style sheet can be referenced as follows. Let's check if this works in the browser. No, the style seems unchanged. This is an example where the Django server needs to be restarted. Quit the server with Ctrl C. That is better. A word on Django's placeholder syntax. Variables are surrounded by double curly braces and they output values from the context. Tags are surrounded by curly brace percent and provide logic in the templates. Some tags require opening and closing tags, like you have seen in the product list loop. You have now seen how to load static files in a Django template. There is another type of static file and that is an image. Let's replace the welcome text with a nice store logo. For this, Georgie needs a logo in PNG format. He calls Mr. Gennaro and asks for a logo. Mr. Gennaro answers that his logo was created by Roberto, a graphic designer from Milan. Roberto will contact Georgie to let him know where to find the logo. Georgie receives an email from Roberto and clicks on the link in the email. A GitHub repository is opened in the browser. The repository contains all the media files for the course. Let me show you. I open a new tab in the browser and enter the address. Here you can find the store logo. Let's save the image in the project. In the shop folder in the static folder, I create a new folder called 
images. Logo.png should be in the images folder. Let's use it in the template. Let's test it in the browser. And there is the logo. I'll make it a bit smaller. That is a better logo size. If the website does not change after reloading the page, you might have to force reload the page to refresh the static files. If you look at the website, you might think we are far off from the goal. And indeed, we still have some work to do. But this is already impressive. We created a Django project with dynamic and static elements. But the product list is hard-coded in the view. It is time to store the products in a database. We will do this in the next chapter.